Hello, all of you beautiful plenty people. How are you doing today? If this is your first time here, welcome. It is so lovely to have you. My name is Nikki. This is my channel, Plants, Pots, and Whatnots. If you are returning like the gluttons for punishment that you are, welcome back. It is amazing to see you as always. So, <laughs> I've been procrastinating quite hard on something and uh, we're going to take care of that today. And this beautiful gal right here is what we're going to take care of. So um, my Alocasia Brydeck desperately needs a repot. She's got some new uh, pups growing in there that we need to take out and she's just starting to look not her perkiest. So we're going to fix that today. <laughs> so as I go through the repot, um, I'll probably kind of yammer on just about some tips and tricks that I've learned about growing the Frydeck um, over the last year-ish. <laughs> so, if that sounds like something that you would like to watch, then by all means stick around and watch and uh, let's, let's get to it before she croaks on me, okay? <laughs> this weird angle I want to make sure that you guys are seeing what I'm doing here but in order to do that I gotta kind of crouch and it's like a whole thing I just need a real camera <laughs> anyway um, so the first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is just mix up the soil that I use for her I'll probably still use quite a bit of the soil that she has um, but I'm gonna mix it in with some nice fresh stuff because uh, there's really nothing wrong with this soil it just needs a little bit of a refresher so <clears throat> I got my handy dandy pot. I've already got my soil in here. I'm probably gonna not gonna need a whole ton, um, but I do wanna add a few amendments to it. So in uh, my little Folgers can here, um, I always keep these after because they're really great. I keep like sag moss in them or bark, in this case perlite. Um, I try to reuse as much as possible just so I'm not like tossing these when they're perfectly good containers. So we're going to go ahead and Okay, helpful tip. <laughs> Don't do what I just did. <coughs> See, I make these mistakes so you don't have to. All right. And I have these I love this bark because it's nice and fine. So this is the stuff that I use when I don't want a super, super chunky mix. So let me just get up there and close and show you. There you go. I'm not sure, I can't remember what the actual bark is, but you can tell they're like little small pieces. And this stuff is great um, for stuff like alocasias. It gives you that um, aeration, a uh, little bit of chunk in the soil and it also holds on to a bit of moisture which um, alocasias do like so we're gonna go ahead and put some in there that should probably be good all right oh no all right we're just gonna mix that up in there <coughs> seriously I don't know why you guys watch me, seriously. All right, there's a lot of dust. I think it was like the end of the bag that I just dumped in that container. So it's got a lot of that like residual dust at the bottom. There we go. Okay, so that is what the soil mix looks like. It's nice and airy, but it does have some moisture retention, which is fantastic. So I'm going to set that aside right now and we're going to attempt to get this gal out of the pot. Um, I do have a couple other pots sitting here on the sidelines that I'm going to use for the pups that I can, um, I don't know, depending on what I've got in here, I might plant the bigger one directly into soil and then maybe the smaller ones into the smaller pots. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. We're just going to wing it because that's what we do, right? We wing life, we wing our eyeliner. here she is <laughs> you can see that she's got one pup here uh, with her the first leaf um, is on its way out 
but that's fine. The actual new pup is quite healthy. And then we spin you around. This is no. <laughs> Can you say nope? Um, so this is the second one. It's got two leaves here, and then I can see it down. Stop doing that, Nikki. Figure it out. Down here, you probably can't see it on camera, but there is a tiny little rhizome growing down here. And there may be others in the soil that we'll dig out as we go here. Um, but yeah, our first step is to get her out of the pot. So um, I've had her strapped up. Hi. I had her strapped up and that was because she was leaning towards the sunlight. As you can see, she was like... <laughs> And uh, the location that I had her moved to was not great. So that is the one tip that I will give you for alocasias. If you find they're really, really leaning, but it, the plant seems healthy, it's probably because they're reaching for a light source. Um, so I find with Fridex um, and a lot of other plants, really, um, you're best to have an overhead light source. So the plant wants to grow up straight and then you don't get this bowing and bending of the plant. So. There's one little tip for you. A lot of people will think that their plant is, is dying or wilting or whatever, when in fact it's just trying to reach for, for sunshine or light. So, helpful tip number one. So I'm just gonna undo her. Oh, poor baby. And I'm gonna take this steak out. <clears throat> and I'm gonna make a super mess while I do this. All right, I'm gonna lay her down gently don't get on my coffee All right. okay so what do we got going on here you can only see one pup coming up so far let's see if we can wiggle her oh <laughs> that was easy Okay, so the roots don't look too bad. She's not root bound or anything, um, but we definitely need to get these pups out. So, I'm just gonna slowly pull away this soil. Um, when I potted it, it, I potted it in, like I said, similar soil, so it, it's not too dense and it's actually breaking away rather easily, um, which is how you know you've got a good soil mix, that it's not like super, um, super, super tight and hard as a rock. Oh, I can see some other rhizomes down in here. That's exciting. <clears throat> so she'll be able to go right back into her original pot. Um, be careful with the alocasias because their, their roots are extremely tender and they're ex like they're really, really easy to break off. As you can see, I'm being super, super gentle and some of them are just falling off anyway. Um, she'll rebound from it. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but if you can help it, you know. Okay, some more roots on this side. And I want to get as much of this off as I can so I can see if I can find any little babies that might be growing. And there's one right there. I'll just speed this part up. <laughs> this might take a minute because I'm trying to be really gentle. Okay, here's that little baby plant that's growing right there, if you can see. So that's the one that was barely peeking out. Um, so you just want to be really, really careful. I'm just trying to find the edges of that particular rhizome so I can take that out of there carefully. Where are you, baby? There we go. There's that little rhizome. It just looks like a little bulb. 
So we're gonna set that one aside and we will plunk it in soil. Cause she's got enough roots that I think that should be okay. There's a couple other little rhizomes here at the bottom. I'm just gonna take this dead leaf off. Ugh. Cause she's getting in my way. <laughs> now the tricky part is gonna be getting this pop off because it's extremely close to, let me turn it around here. It's extremely close to the, uh, the stem of the other plant. So I wanna be really, really delicate with it because the last thing I wanna do, I'm just kind of peeking underneath, trying to figure out where it's coming from, the actual little rhizome that's coming out of. <laughs> oh, she's tangled in there. Okay, let me see if you can get a close up view there. Can you see that? It's kind of a tangled mess. So pulling this out of here is gonna be a little tricky. that is what it looks like you just have to be really delicate um, pulling them off so this guy I'm gonna go ahead and I'll probably just pop that right into soil um, and just kind of keep an eye on it for a little while to make sure that it survives and then oh oh no <laughs> let me kill this plant before I get it back in so let's go ahead and take the one on the other side off here this one is probably going to be a little bit easier, although that one wasn't too bad. It just looked like it was going to be. I'm just digging around so I can see where it's coming from. Ivy, why are you doing that? My cat is up on the shelf where I have my sago palm and she's pulling the little pieces of bark out of the plants and throwing them onto the floor. Hey, look at me. Stop it. Ivy. It's gonna get in trouble. Okay. Now, I gotta track this one back. She's right underneath there. This one actually might be the more difficult one. Oh, oh. There we go. Okay, there's the second one. And then we have a couple little rhizomes here that I'm gonna go ahead and put in soil. There's that one there, and then there's this one here. That one I'm, uh, I don't know if I wanna leave that one or not. Oh, there's another one coming here. That's exciting. Okay, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that one as is. I don't wanna mess with it too much more. Um, so I'm gonna lie her down. We'll get the soil put into the pot and uh, we'll get her put back and all situated nicely. And then I'll show you what I'm gonna do with the babies. So I just wanna kind of poke through here to make sure that I didn't pull off any little pups that I didn't see. I don't think I did. Just trying to get some of these roots out of here it's not the end of the world they'll break down and and whatever anyways but okay so I'm gonna put a lot of this soil back in and some of the soil I'm gonna save to put the pups in just so that they're in familiar territory PS I bought this boot tray you can see it on Walmart's website, I think. Um, it was like nine bucks, and it's like the perfect size, even for larger potting. Um, it's super great, and it's nice and sturdy. It's not gonna flop around on you. And, you know, I just take it, whatever soil I don't use that's on it, I just take it out to the back patio and I bang it off, and Bob's your uncle, you're on your way. Anyway. You don't have to pay like ridiculous prices for stuff like that at all when
then um, you know you can get creative and use other options and these boot trays are great for that because they're really designed to like you know pull things in it <laughs> all right so I got my soil in there take her and put her right down in there um, after I get her in here I'm gonna put her in a spot where there's light above her and eventually those will get pulled back up where's my spoon A little bit of this. And then I'm going to use a little bit of the new. potting anything by the way if you guys ever see me like doing this and you think oh my gosh she's making the soil like <clears throat> completely packed down I'm not your soil will settle substantially once you watered especially when you have a lot of perlite and stuff in there so you want to just kind of settle it down give it a shake and a tap make sure it's, it sits down around those roots nicely um, to prevent like air gaps and things like that so I'm not like compacting the soil, I'm just gently packing it down there. Because you'll notice once um, you water it, that soil level will drop and you'll probably have to add more soil. Jordan has been freaking out about this plant for the last little while. He's like, it's dying. I'm like, it's not dying, it's fine. But it's all drooping. It looks really sad and I'm scared because he really likes this plant. <laughs> and. Uh, so hopefully he'll feel better about it now that she's <laughs> in a new pot. I'm gonna give it a little bit more because I know it's gonna settle down a little further once I water it. quite centered in the pot but all right I'm gonna get her put back up on this stake for now just stick that right down in there and then Do this too tightly because one of the mistakes that I made was oh man you're not down there for real. Um, one of the mistakes I made was that I had this part too tightly wound close to the stake and when the new leaf came out because this piece was so tight, it pushed right up alongside the uh, Velcro. And that's what happened to, let's see if you can see it, this leaf right here. And the Velcro just scratched right up the side of the leaf while it was like opening. So don't do that. Okay, I think she's good. For now and I'm gonna put her underneath a light uh, with a light source on top and we'll get her growing up straight and she'll be wonderful in no time so I'm gonna put her aside and then I'm gonna come back and show you what I'm gonna do with the pups okay I thought I would bring you in a little closer for this one because um, it's smaller and I'll just hold it up here and show you so we have a few this is the biggest one so it's a two leaf little plant there are the roots so these are all okay to go ahead and just plant directly into soil so I'm gonna use some of the soil that they were grown in um, 
just to try to minimize some of the shock. So I've got the soil in there. I'm just kind of making a little hole. Set him in there. Hold on. There we go. Okay. And then just fill in around. adorbs. I'm gonna have like a whole bunch of fried eggs. I love plants. <laughs> okay, so there is number one. We'll just set her right there. I can't really see her, but that's okay. That's okay. All right, the next one is this one. So there's a little less root but it should be totally fine. So we'll throw some soil in here. Get that root out of there. Looks like she's gonna be a little bit more straight. Her roots are a little bit more straight up and down. There we go. It's just the cutest thing. This tiny little one leaf plant. Oh, I forgot you can't even see what I'm doing. I suck. But you can see the leaf. <laughs> okay, I'm just, honestly, I'm just filling the pot. It's not exciting. <clears throat> there we go. Baby Friday number two. <laughs> I'll give you guys updates on these guys as they grow because, uh, you know, you knew them when they were just barely a sprout. I don't know. I don't know. Don't ask. Okay. And the last two that I have are these guys. So there's this little one that's sprouting already. And then there's this. There's this little rhizome that I'm going to throw in soil and it should sprout, no problems. But we'll see. So, I'm gonna fill one of these little pots here with soil. Okay. Set her right there. I don't wanna bury this part because this is the part that was already above the soil in the uh, other pot and it's starting to develop uh, an actual petiole now, so we don't wanna bury her. So there is Frydeck number three, new little sprout there. And last but not least, this funky little rhizome that should grow into a plant. And this one, um, because it doesn't have a growth point or anything, I'm actually gonna put it right down in the soil and just cover it. After I break it in half. It's okay. It should still be fine. There we go. So he is all down in there. So this one, uh, because I just snapped the root in half, the rhizome's fine and all that, and it still has most of the root. So I'm just gonna wait to water that one for a day or so because um, I don't want a whole lot of moisture getting right into that root and then rotting it out. 
So that one I will water right away. These ones I am going to give a bit of a drink. So there we go. We have all of our little fried eggs all repotted and happy. We have the big one repotted and happy. Um, I think I think alocasias get a bad rap. Um, personally, I've never had a spider mite on any of my alocasias, and I think I have about five or six of them. Um, thrips are a whole different story because I've been dealing with thrips for the better part of a year now. Um, sometimes worse than others. Uh, the spring seems to have brought around a whole new batch of them. And I'm starting to think that maybe their eggs, uh, the eggs that they lay in the leaves, maybe kind of hang out over the winter and then start to drop in the spring. I don't know if that's the case. I know they do lay their eggs in the leaves though. And um, haven't brought anything in that would have them. So that's the only thing that I can think of, or at least not that I'm aware of. Um, so anyways, I'm dealing with a little bit of a thrip issue, not a bad one, not anything like I was last year, but again, it's one of those things that pets, pests come with the territory. You're going to have them. You probably have them, whether you can see them or not is a whole different story. Um, anyway, this is not a pest video. This is a Friday video. Um, but my best advice to you about alocasias, give them a well-draining soil that does hold a little bit of moisture. Um, I wouldn't give them as chunky a soil mix as you would give like an, an aeroid, say, um, such as like a philodendron or a monstera they, or an anthurium. They require a little bit more of a chunky mix, but I find these guys like a little bit less of a chunk, but still well-draining and a little bit moisture retentive. So that's that on the soil. Um, they don't need super high light, but they do need, an, um, I would say like a medium to bright light. Uh, and again, try to keep the light source above the leaf because these leaves uh, do get quite large. Um, if it starts to stretch to lean to try to find the sun, it's just gonna pull that leaf over. Now, if you like that drooping look and you have the space for that, then fine, not a problem. Um, the plant doesn't really care as long as it's getting the light. Um, but yeah, so whatever option you want to go with. But I mean, I know a lot of people think that theirs are drooping or dying when in fact it's just trying to reach to get to light. I know I said that before, but that's one of the main questions that I get. Um, I don't tend to have that three leaf curse that everybody else seems to have. Um, as you can see, my fry deck has, I think, six or seven leaves. Um, even while it was pushing out pups, <laughs> so that's, that's pretty impressive. Um, but I'm sure there's a whole lot of other things. I do have an Alocasia Fry Deck care guide specifically. I will link that up here in the cards if you want to go check that out. Now keep in mind that was last year, um, but I think most of the information still rings true. Um, and if you have any actual questions, something that I haven't covered or maybe isn't covered in that video, please go ahead and leave it down in the comments or alternatively, you can send me a message on my Instagram. Here's my Instagram. If you're not already following me, please go ahead and follow me. I post all kinds of pictures and updates and just random Nikki silliness <laughs> um, over there. And I would love to have you over there as well. Um, that's also where I usually post if I have any questions for you guys or if I have any um, content ideas that I want to throw by you or polls and that kind of thing that's usually where I'll do that um, yeah what else what else I think that's about it <laughs> okay so I'm really glad this is finally done uh, it's been a long time coming I need to stop procrastinating on things which reminds me I need to repot my philodendron mammae I'll get to you girl I promise eventually okay so uh, without further ado I would like to thank you all for liking and commenting and watching and subscribing if you haven't already please consider subscribing it is a huge help to my channel and I really do appreciate it and as always please everyone have a great day night week month year I love you all the bitty bits and I will see you in the next one Mwah.